On October 20th, 2010, Mac OS X Line was shown to the public by Apple at their Back to the Mac special event. Almost a year later, in July of 2011, it was released to the public via the Mac App Store for $29.99 US dollars. On its first day, Apple reported that it had sold over 1 million copies of their new OS. It introduced many things to Mac OS X, such as a new Aqua interface and many apps and features we still have in Mac OS X today, such as FaceTime, Launchpad, and AirDrop. Its last release came out almost four years ago, so I asked the question, is Lion still a usable OS in 2018? For this test, I will be using my 2007 MacBook Pro 15-inch running 10.7.5. It is 2 GB of RAM and 2.16 GHz Core 2 Duo processor, and a 128 GB hard drive. Definitely not much of a speed demon by today's standards, but it still does everything I need. Please do keep in mind that a lot of the things you are going to see in this video are going to be bottlenecked by my machine. I'm running this on a late 2006 MacBook Pro and it cannot do all these tasks as fast as some modern computers. This is a test to see what Lion's raw capabilities are. That said, a lot of these tests may turn out differently on newer computers, and it may run a lot of things better. For example, I'm going to be doing a YouTube playback. That will be very different on different machines. So please keep that in mind while you're watching this. This is a test of Lion's raw capabilities of what it can do today not the performance of them. For the first of these tests, we will of course look at internet capabilities, as that's what most people are looking for in a computer today. The highest version of Chrome Lion can run is 49, which is a few years out of date now and security is very outdated. Safari is also very outdated. However, even with Chrome being out of date, it still is able to load most sites. Google, probably one of the most basic websites of all, is quick and responsive. Basic websites, like every Mac, load fine. All the images and links are present and load without a problem. Even Apple's website loads without issue. Apple is known for having a lot of graphic intensive content on their websites and as you can see here it loads without a problem and scrolls through without issue. YouTube playback is pretty hit or miss. This version of Chrome is able to load and render the web page correctly. However, it is a different version of YouTube that you would see on a newer browser. It loads all the thumbnails correctly and can search videos and also play them back. However, playback quality is largely attributed to the machine that you are actually running it on. However, the ability of the web page to be rendered is based on Lion since this is the highest version of Chrome it is supported. I find the best circumstances for my machine to play videos is at 480p maximum with the standard video player. That yields the best results. However, like I said, based on your system configuration, you may have different results. The next area, video chat, goes hand in hand with internet capabilities. Lion originally shipped with Apple's own video conferencing application known as FaceTime. It first debuted on the iPhone 4 back in iOS 4, and it allowed Mac users to video chat not only with themselves, but also iOS users. There are also many other third-party apps available for Lion that allow you to video chat, so we'll be looking at a few of them. Unfortunately, FaceTime yields nothing but connection error when you try to sign in, most likely because Apple has changed something in newer versions that this version is not compatible with. The newest version of Skype requires 10.9 Mavericks, so it will not work in Lion. Older versions do the same thing that FaceTime did. It will not connect to your account. And Google Hangouts yields nothing but a blank screen when you go to video chat. However, the voice, call, and texts do work. 
The next area to take a look at is word processing. Although word processors may seem basic and simple, it is important to have a good word processor on your computer today. It is essential for many parts of your life, such as education and the workplace. We will be looking at word processors from Microsoft in the Microsoft Office Suite with Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, and also the in-browser versions that Google uses that many people are using today, such as Docs, Sheets, and Numbers. Unfortunately, I do not have the iWork Suite, so we can't look at Numbers, Pages, and Keynote. However, they are very similar to Microsoft Office, so the difference is pretty minuscule there. First, we'll look at Microsoft Office. The latest version of Office that will run on Lion is Office 2011. Considering the last release was in 2016, it really isn't all that out of date. Word launches fine, you're able to pick a document and start editing it right away, and there's no input lag from the keyboard. You can even put in charts from Excel and other tables and graphs. Excel also launches quickly. You are able to start editing your document within a reasonable amount of time. PowerPoint also launches exceptionally quick. You are able to choose a document to start and then start editing it straight away. Next we'll look at Docs. This version of Chrome is able to render Docs correctly and I am able to sign into my Google account and open up a document that I have in my Google Docs. As you can see it is able to open the document, however it takes a bit to get there fully. As you can see the fonts and the top menu bar takes a couple seconds to load after you load the document. Also scrolling is very choppy, however like I said before this could be due to the machine and you may experience different things on your machine if it's spec differently than mine. I am able to pick place in the document and start editing it though, so I say this works. For the next section we'll be looking at multimedia capabilities. Primarily music and video playback. For this section we'll be looking at three apps, iTunes for music, the built-in QuickTime player for video, and VLC player. The first app we'll take a look at is iTunes. The most recent version of iTunes that will run online is iTunes 12.2.2.25. This version of iTunes can still access the iTunes Store, make purchases, and it also supports iCloud Music Library streaming, which is what Apple Music uses when you download songs onto your iPhone. So I'm able to listen to all my music from my iPhone on this computer. I can also listen to Apple's radio. Unfortunately, however, due to the age of iTunes, it will not sync to my iPhone X. The next app we'll be looking at is VLC Media Player. The most recent version of VLC, version 3.0.2, will run in Lion. VLC is one of the most versatile media players there are, being able to play almost every single file format available. Here it's playing a 1080p HD video at 60 frames per second with no issues. The next app we'll look at is QuickTime, which can play MP4 files along with some others. It is Apple proprietary and the most recent version is 10.1, which was released in 2012. However, it still plays HD video without a problem. How does Lion handle games, you might think? Well, if you know Macs, then you know Macs really are not computers built for games. Even a lot of modern titles still do not run perfectly on even brand new Macs, such as the new 15-inch MacBook Pro with a touch bar. However, there are some older titles that will still run on Lion, and a lot of emulators for older games that will run without an issue. Modern titles are most likely completely out of the question. 
The next thing to look at is how does Lion act with newer versions of OS X. I have a Retina MacBook Pro running Mac OS Sierra, which is 10.12. We'll be seeing how files are shared and how screen sharing works with this older version of OS X. First, we'll see how the shared folder works. On the left bar in the finder, you can see my MacBook Pro is showed up as shared. Here are my shared folders, which are files on my computer. I can view my applications among anything else that is on my hard drive. Next, we'll see how screen sharing works. Screen sharing is a built-in app to OS X that allows you to connect to another user's computer and use it remotely. Here, we're logging on to my MacBook Pro. Although it is sluggish, mainly because of the screen recording, it does work. I am able to change things around on my computer, and as you can see, I have the Finder open while I'm actually editing this video. As you can see, I'm moving around the desktop without problem. Next, we'll see if it works the other way, from Sierra to Lion. Unfortunately, as you can see in the Finder, my MacBook Pro is not showing up in shared devices, even though sharing is turned on on system preferences in Lion. For some reason, it will not show up. I was experimenting with this when I first got the laptop, and it was indeed showing up. However, now for some reason it's not. So I'm going to declare this a hit or miss, since I know that I have done it before, but for some reason right now, it's not working. Most likely, I changed the setting on accident, I just haven't changed it back. So, is Lion a usable OS in 2018? I say yes, it is. It is able to do most basic tasks without issue. However, one problem persists. It has not gotten a security update in several years, and its web browsers have also not been kept up. This proves dangerous when surfing the web. While it might not be dangerous to Google things or look at regular websites, doing stuff like going onto your bank account, signing into your email, or even shopping online at eBay can prove dangerous as the security exploits may allow somebody to get your information into the wrong hands. That being said, I think Lion would be a good OS on someone's secondary computer, not their main one. The security flaws simply make it too vulnerable to be used as an everyday machine. For just simple web browsing, getting schoolwork done, or watching DVDs or movies, it does the job. Why Apple killed it off, I will never know. Microsoft supported XP for 13 years after it was released, and Lion only got 3 years of support. That's a quarter of the time. Unfortunately, it seems to be Apple's way. Some speculate that it's to push consumers to buy new computers, also known as planned obsolescence, which Apple has actually gotten into trouble for recently with their iPhones. But part of me doesn't want to believe that. Thank you so much for watching this little video of mine, and please leave feedback if you'd like to see more like this. See you in the next one. Thanks.